Good evening viewers and welcome back to the channel. Another instalment um, on the trials bike build today and what I'm going to be doing is putting new bearings in the dog bone part of the suspension. Now I've done one already as you can see it's quite a shiny in there. Now the reason I've done one already is because they are a different like an aftermarket bearing a, um, a custom made one an upgrade if you like because they are listed as an upgrade for these so I wanted to make sure it was a fit it did fit in um, otherwise it'd be a bit silly if it wasn't actually working but it's in and it's very smooth lovely nice so I'm just going to run you through the process of what I actually did to do that and don't need a specific tool you can I'm sure there is out there something you can use to do this but I am going to be using simply a four inch G-clamp. Oh, that's just come out of there. Put that back in. Um, and three sockets. One deep and two small. Now, these, for reference, these, I think these, are, these two are a 21 mil. And this one is, what is that one? It's a 14 mil. Now, depending on the size of the bearing you're going to remove this will differ but i'll explain why in a minute but this is the way i do it and i'm sure others have done it this way um, but this works quite nicely for me and it's very 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 simple so firstly side on these on these dog bones you'll see that they have bearings in them and in the end they, they actually move in fact i have taken this one out i've just taken it out and all the little rollers have come out they're very rusty uh, so they all just fell out as i did it but first you want to, oh I just came out quite easily, uh, the seals. So you want to remove the seals and then inside there is a sleeve. So you want to pop that out, look how rusty it is, it's, it's obviously not been done for a good while. And then the bearing sits in there, now inside there it would be the rollers of course, uh, but they've all fallen out. So this is the part you need to, to be pressing out. So to do this, the reason I this, so I'll show you what I'll do with these. So the sockets you want to use, these are just little 21 mil. Get that one right. Uh, you want a socket that fits sort of flush with the body of the dog bone itself. And you can see that's a pretty much exact fit, but big enough to allow. Um, this is the new bearings I'll use. It. This is exactly the same. They are the bearings to actually fit in. So as you're pushing it, it can go in there. Uh, and then. The opposite, the smaller one of the two, because of course those are the, those are the, the same size, but I'll explain why I'm um, using a deep and a, a shallow one in a minute. Uh, you want one that is pretty much flush with the bearing itself, as you can see. That way this one is used to push it. Okay, so let's put that to the side for now. So to get this out, We'll open up the G-clamp. Let me get him open. Um, the reason I'm using shallow one is because my, if you've got a bigger G-clamp, you might be able to just use this straight away. So all we're doing basically is going to put, uh, we're going to push it this way. Push it because the seal's still in there, so the seal will come out into this uh, with it. So that's going on one side, just like that. And then this one is going to go against the bearing. And then, of course, in the G-clamp, we're going to push it, and it's going to push that bearing then into this socket. Quite simple. But because the G-clamp I'm using is not quite big enough, I'm going to have to start with this one. And then, once it's half out, I'll swap them over. This is quite fiddly to do to get it right, uh, but it is quite simple. So I need to open it up a little bit more anyway. Pretty much all the way. And then when it's on... So you want the the big the, the the larger socket on the the solid side here. If you can see that, yeah, you can see it a little bit closer. And then the smaller socket against the bearing. And then we're going to slowly wind it up so it all comes tighter. It to actually get this, but it's quite straightforward once it starts tightening up because you can start lining it up now. So, as long as 
as you see it's there like that tighten it up right that's a nice grip so now what i'm going to do is as i start turning this you don't need much force you don't need a, like a spanner on the end of there for leverage it is simply going to probably not lined up properly actually if it's not lined up properly it's going to push against that socket and not actually come out but just give it a good old twist but it is coming it's a bit tight this one oh that's it that's fine if it's a bit tight it's a bit rusty like that it's just going to take some force to actually come out and now now it's sort of broke the seal if you like it is coming quite nicely so keep on turning it if it is too tight then yeah you can use a spanner or something add a little bit of extra leverage because they're not big bearings and that's like coming i can feel that's quite smooth now and it's coming out very nicely so we get to a halfway point and i'm just going to back it off a bit and then open it all the way up because i'm going to swap now and use the deep now the reason you have to use the deep socket is if i can get that out, i'll show you it's not Oh, that seals. Mm. No, that's bust. Now, we don't actually need to reuse these. Usually, you would keep these and reuse them, but the reason you don't need to keep these seals and reuse them is because these ones, or usually you would, uh, but these ones have actually got seals, and if you can see them inside, and actually, um, oh, it's the old, the old bearing. I'll get the old bearing on and show you size-wise. They are slightly different. Um, so yeah, I'll quickly just load this up, push the rest of it out, open it up a little bit more. A little bit tricky, a little bit fiddly to do, but it's it's more than easy enough. So get them in there, close them up. And there we are. Okay, so like I say, that's the same again. That's on there, but it's deep. It's got more travel, so the bearing can actually go in there now fully. So just keep on going all the way. And there we go. See that has now dropped the bearing out and then inside there he is that's the old bearing of course there's no rollers in it because it's completely knackered i move them over um yes yeah, so what i showed you so this is this is the old bearing of course there would be rollers inside it uh, the sleeve would fit in the middle of there but if you look this one is actually considerably wider now the reason it's wider is because it's got the built-in seals so i don't need to reuse thankfully i don't need to reuse it because that's a bit gone now um obviously one's metal one is rubber in fact tell a light they're both metal i thought they were rubber but they're, they're metal um so yeah don't need them anymore as you can see this is the one that i did before it is complete it just it won't it won't go on i mean as you see the bearing is flush with the body of the dog bone um, I do them one at a time rather than taking them all out because because of the, the hole in the centre of the, of the sleeve is slightly different so depending on the side I think the, the bottom um, has the smaller hole in it and the wider hole is for the top side of the top of the upper part of the suspension so just make a note with those they are slightly different not that it matters you can always pop them out and swap them around anyway but it just makes it a little bit easier to do so that's it bearings out nicely so that can go over here along with the seals um, they can all go in the scrap because they're done uh, just check the condition of it make sure it is all right i've got some fine wire wool just to run in there just to get all the all the crap make it nice and smooth and you clean it all out make it all good use whatever you want to clean this but very fine wire wools i think it's amazing stuff because it really does clean surfaces of metal, shiny. Okay, once that's done, then you've got the new bearing. Now you can grease it up just a little bit. I've got some of this um, waterproof molly grease that I had before when I did the um, steering head bearings. So I'll put dabble on the inside of here just to make it a bit easier. But to put them back in, you're quite simply doing in reverse order. But you don't you don't need the sockets for this. Close the clamp up slightly. On some of those, you just know, I think 
I don't know if it is on this one yet, but one side of these are actually slightly tapered. Uh, obviously it makes it a little easier to actually get in. So I'm gonna go in from that way. Again, making note, I don't think the old one. I can't really see it's a bit rusty, but I think one side of that is slightly tapered. So just bear that in mind when you're pushing the bearings in, because you want to get them lined up, because if you push and they're on a wonk, then it's gonna cause problems. So again, just once they're in, a little bit of grease is in the body of it, close it up. And nice and straight. Until it is nice and straight. There we are. Again, making sure that it is straight, because if it's on a one, it's not going to go in properly and you're going to cause damage. Wind it off. little bit fiddly but uh, more than doable there we are I guess if you just hold it with one hand as straight as possible and then sort of give it a and you can see that now Yeah, this one's just not going in as, as straight as the other one went in quite easily. God, you always get one tricky one. The other one I did just went straight in. Did you see if the other side's tapered? No. It did go in, a bit of faffing about, a bit of playing around with it. Making sure it is perfectly lined up because like I say it will. It will not go in if it's not straight. My hands have got grease on them, so they're slipping and sliding all over the place. So, yeah. Right, it's still going in on a bit of a wonk, so I'm just gonna have a play. Try and get that in, and I'll cut back. And, uh, see what we can do right so I have now finally got that in there straight so once it's in and it starts going it will it'll just go in again slowly turning and it will start going all the way home and because it, it it'll stop at the very end you'll need to use the smaller socket just to push it in that little bit further and make sure it's flush with both edges of the dog bone you see it's going in nicely now and that is it because you're not using too much force on this at all so it's not going to damage the bearing but just bear in mind once it's a bit of pressure there just back off and then check it and as you can see it's still sticking out a little bit so it just needs to go in just a touch more and you can see that so for this i will just use the smaller socket just to give it that little bit extra I think in fact, yeah, the part of the G-Fan is too wide so it won't actually go all the way in. So here's a quick straightforward doing and then rather than buying tools, it um, works and it doesn't just work for these dog bone. I mean, this is this is from a trials bike, of course it's the big ass gas build I'm doing, but it's a suspension set up for a lot of trials bikes, motocross bikes, anything like that, even road bikes. And not just for these dog bones specifically, but for any any unit that has um, sort of a bearing that could be accessible from both sides, you can use a G-Camp if it's, if it's big enough. I could just give it a final little squeeze. It is going the further way. Make sure it's flush with the body. There we are. It, didn't take too much effort. it is slightly damaged, this doll bone. It's a little bit, a bit kinked. You can see it there, but it's lovely on flush now on both sides so all I'm going to do now is put a drop of the grease again waterproof grease you can't go wrong I have to use my little finger because my finger won't fit in there a bit of grease on the rollers in there just to prolong any moisture that does get in it'll, uh, it'll boot it out a little bit protect it prolong its life now apparently these rollers these bearings that I've got are, are supposed to last longer than the original ones 
I think that those seals that are on them are a bit better in the design of them, like they are custom made. Uh, but they look better, seem, seem stronger. Um, the original sleeve, I want to be using that again, they can give that a, a nice clean up with a wire, wire wool, just getting some of the surface rust off, because this is brilliant stuff. Give it, give it a good clean, making sure. And no rust, there's a tiny bit. This is off a 2005, but I don't know what the suspension came off. Whether it was, a two, I think it was a 2003 when I bought it. So you can see they've been in, they've not been changed. They've been on there for a good long while. Again, a little bit of grease just on the on the, on the insert there. Give it a nice bit. Some of this will push out, but at least it's greased up. And then push that back in. We'll go in, lovely stuff, there we are. And that's it. Just making sure it's all straight. Looks the part. And again, don't need those seals. If the if they're they're all right and you yeah, don't break them, then it might be worth keeping them. Um, just in case you have to be you can buy the kits for these the replacement kits, the, the sort of the OEM ones that will come with the the bearings, seals, and the inserts there, the uh, the sleeves. But that is lovely and smooth, nicely, so that can go back onto the suspension, and then I'll set all that up. But just the one to do, I'm not going to do them all because it is it is a quite a fiddly job to do. This is it, very straightforward. So I'll crack on with the rest of them and then I will do a separate video of actually getting these on the bike. But um, but no, that is it. Lovely stuff. So yeah, that feels good. Uh, but thank you for watching and I hope this does help someone with this method. I'm not too sure if it's a a method that a lot of people will do but it certainly works and it certainly avoids big cost of taking it to a garage and say well can you push this bearing out which they'll do quite easily but you'll get a cost um, and the sake of using a g-clamp and a few sockets easy enough and uh, very good but yeah so thank you for watching uh, and please subscribe and I'll hopefully continue this build and upload some content very soon. But thank you very much. Good night.